Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another very interesting problem for all of you that is uh, Pathfinder Check Your Understanding Kinematics uh, problem number 37 and the title of the problem is The Futile Chase. So uh, it turns out that students find this problem to be very very difficult. In fact, uh, some of the students are able to do the A part and the first part of the B part but uh, the most challenging part is the last bit of the B part so let's uh, without much delay see what's the problem and then how to go about doing it okay so here's the problem a particle P is moving with a constant speed u on a straight line that makes an angle theta with positive x direction of the coordinate system so you can imagine that uh, there is a x axis and there is some y axis and this particle P uh, which is going with a constant speed u on the straight line at angle theta okay when p crosses the y axis at point 0 comma l another particle q starts from the origin and chases p with uniform speed v so uh, so p uh, starts from somewhere over here at t equal to 0 this is uh, some point 0 comma l and starts moving with some speed u and at the same time another particle starts chasing it with some speed v and this particle q okay and then we are supposed to answer some parts uh, under certain assumptions okay so uh, so when P crosses the y axis at point 0 comma L, another point Q starts from the origin and chases P with uniform speed small v, small v is greater than u. The chaser all Q always maintains its velocity vector towards the chased P. Okay, So Q is always uh, pointing towards, its velocity is always pointing towards the line joining the PQ, right? Okay. How long after Q starts from the origin will it catch P? So this is first part we have to answer that after how much time uh, obviously v has to be greater than u if it is to uh, uh, catch it is to be able to catch point p okay so we have first uh, first of all we have to find the uh, time required for catching okay then the second part is if both the chaser q and the chased p move with equal speeds that is u is equal to v what will be the minimum distance between them and what will be the maximum magnitude of acceleration of the chaser so it turns out that uh, students are able to do part A and even this part minimum distance between them but the difficult part is uh, finding the maximum magnitude of acceleration of the chaser Q. So if you have already done A part and the first part of the B part uh, then you can straight away um, I mean forward this video to uh, uh, check out this part how to find the maximum acceleration of the chaser Q okay I'll be presenting the entire solution so if you want you can give it a try and uh, uh, I'll be presenting my solution right away. So let's look at my solution. Okay. So uh, in the first part, so let me just explain this figure how I have drawn. So P is moving straight away, uh, straight on this line uh, with a constant speed u, and uh, Q is always pointing towards uh, P. So initially P was here and Q was uh, wa walking in this direction or running in this direction. As P keeps moving ahead, Q keeps on uh, rotating its velocity vector. So at some instant, let us say it is at point some Q dash and uh, P is at some point P dash. So velocity vector of Q is pointing towards the line Q dash P dash, right? So what is the approach velocity? So approach velocity is a standard concept that you study when you study kinematics. Velocity of approach, velocity of separation. Uh, during the relative velocity you study about it so it's a standard concept and I'm not going to present that thing in detail here okay so you can refer to the standard text for that but here if you see what is the approach velocity so approach velocity we mean the rate of reduction of the distance between Q dash and P dash so so this is uh, moving with V and its velocity is directly along uh, Q, Q dash P dash so because of the motion of Q dash the approach velocity is V itself and because of the motion of uh, P if P were only moving the rate of increase of this distance this distance would have been u cos phi so because of velocity of q the distance would decrease and because of velocity of p the distance would increase so net approach velocity is nothing but v minus u cos phi right so uh, approach velocity is rate of reduction of distance so let's say capital T is the time by which all the distance is covered so uh, rate of reduction of distance the integral of that will be total reduction in distance right so what's the initial distance initial distance is n L and the final distance is 0 so integral of rate of reduction of distance must be equal to L so that's what I've written integral of velocity of approach that is V due to this and U cos phi due to this so V minus U cos phi dt integral is from 0 to capital T is L okay so I hope the equation 1 is clear 
Now I can also make an equation in the direction of capital X. So what is the capital X? I have drawn the capital X axis parallel to the velocity of P. And I can uh, equate the coordinates of the two particles when the chase is over. So, so capital X coordinates. Uh, so don't confuse capital X with the small x and small y coordinates. That's horizontal and vertical axis. Capital X axis is parallel to the velocity of uh, P itself, right? So, so when the chase is over, the coordinates have to be equal, right? So capital X coordinate has, has also to be same. So what's the initial capital X coordinate of point P? If you see, this distance is L. So because this point is L comma zero, so L and I drop a perpendicular over here. So this distance is L sine theta. So capital X coordinate of P is already L sine theta, right? And it's moving with speed U. So at a time capital T, it is further moved by a distance cap, uh, U capital T. So the coordinate of point P is simply L sine theta plus U capital T, capital X coordinate, right? And what about the capital X coordinate of Q? So the horizontal, rather capital X direction velocity component of this is phi because this angle I've taken as phi. So this is V cos phi, right? So L sine theta plus U capital T must be equal to integral of V cos phi dt, okay? And now I can rearrange this equation one. You see, if you integrate this, this will become V times capital T and this will be U cos phi dt, right? So V times capital DT and you take the L on this side. So V times capital T minus L becomes, you take this on the other side, this becomes U cos phi DT, right? And now V and U are constants and integral cos phi DT is coming in equation two as well as equation three. So you just divide these two equations. And if you divide these equations, you see the integral part vanishes because that's same for uh, equation two as well as equation three. So the ratio of the right hand side is simply small V upon small U because integrals are uh, same right and the small v and small u are constants right so then that uh, lovely okay uh, it's also there uh, used in one of the erodo problems so this part should not be very difficult so you just divide the two and you straight away get an equation in capital t so l sin theta plus u times capital t divided by v capital t minus l is equal to divide these two so v upon u and now you just uh, rearrange and solve for capital t this is what you get for capital t that is l into v plus u sin theta upon v square minus u square. So this is our a part is done. Okay. Now what was the b part? So first, first part of the b part was uh, finding the steady state separation if both of them are moving with same speed. So if both of them are moving with same speed, you know that finally q will also be moving on the same line as p and the, uh, since the speeds are equal, so the separation is never going to vanish. So Finally, what will happen? P will be moving ahead and Q will be chasing it on the same line and there will be some final separation, okay? So, let's say the final separation between capital P and capital Q is small x, not to be confused with x axis. There's some variable I had to take, so x is the most natural choice for me. So, don't confuse it with the uh, x axis, okay? So, let's say final separation between P and Q is x and now what is the reduction in distance? So, initial distance was, you see, L and final distance is x, so reduction in distance is L minus x, right? So uh, reduction in distance must be the uh, integral of rate of reduction of distance, that's the integral of velocity of approach. So velocity of approach, how much is the velocity of approach as I said in the previous part? So in this case, this is also v and this is also v, so approach velocity is simply v minus v cos phi. So integration of v minus v cos phi dt, okay? This is the, uh, let's say capital T is a very long time, and uh, until that time, the distance is final distance is x, so reduction in distance is L minus x. So this integral must be equal to L minus x, where capital X, uh, where small x is the distance after a very long time, okay? So I hope equation 5 is clear to all of you. Uh, uh, the integration of approach velocity is total reduction in distance, okay? After a long time, the two will be moving along the same straight line, considering the difference of coordinate after a long time. So what's the uh, coordinate of uh, this one, uh, P? So capital X coordinate of this initial at t equal to zero, capital X coordinate is L sine theta. And after L sine theta, it's moving with sp uh, speed V. So L sine theta plus VT will be the coordinate of uh, this thing, uh, the, cap uh, the capital P, okay? At a general uh, time, capital T. And what about the coordinate of Q? So, hor so capital X component of velocity of Q is nothing but small v cos phi, right? So small v cos phi dt integral will give you the coordinate of uh, Q. And the difference of this coordinate should be equal to the final separation, right? That is x. So that's what I've done. So considering the difference of coordinates after a long time, L sine theta plus Vt, this is the coordinate of uh, P because now both are moving with same speed V. 
and minus uh, coordinate of uh, q this is equal to x that's final separation between the two so this is equation 6 and this is equation 5 so i can rearrange equation 5 you see you can take uh, v so this become uh, integral outside so this becomes v times capital t and there will be minus v cos phi dt okay so v times capital t and minus integral of v cos phi dt okay is equal to l minus x okay now once again you see the same integral is there this integral and this integral you can just subtract the two and get rid of this integral part that's the troublesome part and that's like captured and captured and <laughs> the game is simplified okay and uh, so uh, now subtract that now, now what are you left with you see vt of vt also vanishes this term also vanishes only l sin theta remains on the lhs and on the right hand side it is x minus l minus x so that is 2x minus l and just rearrange this equation once again so steady state separation is l into 1 plus sin theta by 2 so this part was uh, probably easy for many of you and uh, uh, and the tough part is now coming okay so the toughest part of this uh, problem is finding the maximum acceleration of q uh, with the case of u being equal to v so let's uh, look at the what are what are the concepts involved here so first concept is if the velocity vector rotates at an angular velocity omega the centripetal acceleration of a particle is given by a centripetal is nothing but v times omega so you might be wondering that uh, why this formula is true we learned this formula in circular motion right that centripetal acceleration is v square by r which is also omega square r and which is also equal to v times omega but what but is it really true for a general path also so answer is yes of course it's valid for a general path also because if it's an arbitrary path also it can be thought of as uh, piecewise circular uh, arcs right any arbitrary path can be thought of as made up of small small circular arcs so this is also true even for uh, arbitrary path that centripetal acceleration is always speed times rate of rotation of the angular velocity vector right okay and the second concept is uh, Okay, so first is if the velocity vector rotates with an angular velocity omega, the centripetal acceleration is v times omega. Se second concept is angular velocity of a line joining two particles is equal to the component of relative velocity perpendicular to the line joining divided by the linear separation between them. So what do I mean? Suppose this is particle A and this is particle B and the velocity of B relative to A is let us say uh, the component perpendicular to the line joining is v perpendicular. Then the omega of uh, this line uh, AB is nothing but rate of rotation of this line AB is nothing but V perpendicular divided by L. This is also a standard concept that you study when you study velocity approach and uh, relative velocity uh, part subtopic. So uh, I'm sure this uh, you have done in your standard theory. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to apply these two concepts to the current problem. Okay. So let's say at some instant capital T the separation between P and Q is L dash. So let's say this distance is L dash. Q dash is over here and P dash is over here. They are the future locations of points P and Q and this separation is L dash. Okay. So now by velocity approach argument, what will be the L dash? So initial separation was L and this time the separation is L dash, right? So, uh, so L dash must be equal to the initial separation minus the reduction of the separation. So what is the velocity approach? You see this, this velocity is always directed along uh, QP itself. So, so because of Q dash, the velocity of approach is V. And because of p dash, it is uh, minus v cos phi because because of motion of p, the separation would increase. So this becomes v minus v cos phi dt. So this is the uh, so this is the initial separation and minus reduction in separation that gives you the final separation. So I hope equation ten is clear. That is uh, separation is equal to initial separation minus reduction in separation. Okay. Now considering the difference of x coordinate, the second equation I can uh, make along the capital x coordinate. So what's the uh, the difference in capital X coordinate you see uh, capital X coordinate distance is nothing but projection of this L dash on this uh, QX line right. So this is the separation so that is L dash cos phi this angle is phi so it is L dash cos phi the difference in capital X coordinates right. So what is the X coordinate capital X coordinate of uh, P at any general time so initial coordinate is uh, L sin theta. And it's moving with v so at general time t the coordinate of p is l sin theta plus v times capital t and q started from origin and its velocity component in this direction at general time is small v cos phi so l sin theta plus vt minus small v cos phi dt that's the coordinate of point q this should be equal to projection of the uh, separation on the capital x axis that is small l dash cos phi that's the difference between the capital x coordinate of the point q and point uh, p okay 
so this is equation 11 and now uh, once again you see uh, equation 10 and 11 uh, pretty similar trick that we have done before uh, you see integral v cos phi we have here and integral v cos phi have we have here so we can just eliminate integration of v cos phi by subtracting the equations appropriately and uh, of course small v integral with respect to time is small v capital T so you can just uh, uh, eliminate small v cos phi integral and solve for uh, L dash so if you fi find L dash this is what you get from equation 10 and 11 by suitably eliminating the integral part okay so L dash is L into 1 plus sin theta upon 1 plus cos phi okay this I'll be using uh, for finding the acceleration and then I'll be uh, optimizing using calculus. So let's see. So I hope the L dash part is clear. So uh, in terms of phi, how uh, L dash varies. Okay. Now since Q is moving with constant speeds, its tangential acceleration is zero. So you know that it's chasing, it's, it has centripetal acceleration, but since speed is constant, so tangential acceleration is zero. Why? So tangential acceleration is nothing but D speed by DT, right? So its tangential acceleration is zero and since its velocity is always directed along p dash q dash its rate of rotation is same as rate of rotation of line p dash q dash you see uh, this q dash is always along this line so as this line keeps rotating the velocity vector of q dash also keeps rotating so so the omega with which the velocity vector of q rotates is same as the omega with which the line p dash q dash rotates and this part uh, is you can just see because of p dash what will be the rate of rotation you see u has a component in this direction u sin phi and this distance is l dash but uh, because of the velocity of q dash there is no rotation right if q dash alone were uh, moving then the this line p dash q dash the distance will say, uh, decrease but there will be no rotation rotation is happening only because of the velocity of uh, p dash so that is u sin phi upon l dash is the omega right by the uh, concept 2 right so, so that's what I have done. Since Q is moving with constant speed, its tangential acceleration is zero, and since its velocity is always directed along p dash q dash, its rate of rotation is same as rate of rotation of line p dash q dash, and the omega of line p dash q dash is nothing but v sin phi by l dash, as I showed you. So v sin phi, since uh, this is u and v are now same because both are moving the same, so it is v sin phi divided by l dash. That's what I have done. Okay. So, uh, okay, this is the omega. And using the equation 12 and 13, I can write the centripetal acceleration as nothing as some uh, say, uh, as uh, nothing but speed times the uh, rate of rotation of the speed uh, angular uh, the rate of rotation of the velocity vector. So this omega I have found here, and the speed I know of course. So and L dash I have found in equation 12. So I can just plug in the value of L dash and then just do uh, v times omega. So if you do that, you get this as the centripetal acceleration, right? From the ground frame, this is the centripetal acceleration of the uh, the chaser okay that is q now for maximum acceleration you know that the derivative of this thing must be zero so what you can do you see v square is constant l is constant 1 plus sin theta is constant so just you can differentiate the phi part right so derivative of this is zero that means what derivative of sin phi into 1 plus cos phi is zero now it's simple calculus exercise if you differentiate this uh, this is what you get now again you can put sin square phi as 1 minus cos square phi and you have a quadratic in cos square phi if you solve this quadratic you get two roots one is minus one uh, i mean the two roots are minus one plus minus three by four the, so that will give you either cos phi is minus one which is ruled out because you can see that, that it will be an acute angle throughout so uh, cos phi cannot be negative that's physically irrelevant solution the only relevant solution is with the positive root that is cos phi is equal to one by two and that gives you phi is equal to 60 degree so if you just put the phi is equal to 60 degree in this equation you put phi equal to 60 degree here and here and simplify so final answer that you get for acceleration is 3 root 3 v square upon 4l into 1 plus sin theta so that's our final answer and that's my analysis for this problem i hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you did enjoy the analysis please uh, do share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord and whatever or um, whatever medium you use for networking with them and uh, uh, give it a thumbs up if you found this video useful and most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel you know what to do so please hit that subscribe button right now and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you